Okay, so in front of us we have a Power Color Red Devil 6900 XT. The cooler looks like such. It's uh, pretty big. I can't really get it on camera. But anyways, the card was sent to me by a YouTube channel called BPS Customs. They were benchmarking this card under liquid nitrogen, and unfortunately it died mid-session. So the owner figured out that if you have the card inserted into a working computer, the computer will not power on whatsoever. But if you take the card out, the computer will boot normally. So even before we looked at the card, we know we have a short, and in particular the owner Brian figured out that the short is connected to this 8 pin. So, you know, props to him for figuring it out. He has a, you know, he he correctly diagnosed that he has an actual hardware hardware level fault and has by extension saved me some work and time. So, anyways, before we uh, So, of course, like all the cards that we get, we want to first check all the voltage rails. So, let's start with the base voltages. We already know that one is short, but we want to make sure that it's just the it's the only short rail. So, I have my multimeter in beep mode. Well, actually, no, I do not. Anyways, like I said, I have my multimeter in beep mode. If I probe ground, or I probe something that's connected to ground, like ground itself, my multimeter beeps. So first, let's check 12 volts. If you don't know, the first three pins on the side of the connector are 12 volts, so checking any one of those first three pins, we're perfectly good. And now let's check 3.3 volts. So we start at this notch, and we go four pins left. The fifth pin left, go, sorry, the fifth pin going left is ground, so we're going to find that ground pin. And we're going to go one to the right. And we're perfectly good. Okay, so 3.3 volts and 12 volts of the PCI Express connector is perfectly fine. Now, let's check the actual, let's check 12 volts itself at these A pins. So we kind of already know what we're going to, what we expect to find. But of course, for the sake of diagnostics, we're going to check anyway. So first, let's check, um, actually, I noticed that there's only two inductors. Actually, let's, I'm going to check the actual A pin itself. So checking the one on the very left. We're perfectly good. Checking the one in the middle, we have a short, just as expected. And checking the one on the right, we're perfectly good. Okay, so we have a short connected to this particular A pin, which again is connected to this inductor. So the thing about short on 12 volts is that, well, shorts on 12 volts, uh, it's well, they're usually trivial if I'm going to be absolutely honest. And in a moment we'll discuss why. So, but before we get on to a short on 12 volts. You know, usually what happens is, you know, either a MOSFET or a power stage dies, in this case power stages. So the first thing we want to do actually, since uh, 12 volts has very likely been sent to the GPU core, so the next thing we want to do is we want to check the resistances across all the other voltage rails. In particular, we want to pay attention to the voltage rails connected directly to the GPU. A short or low resistance, abnormally low resistance I should say, on a rail connected directly to the GPU can often indicate a dead GPU, and when you have a short on 12 volts, it's actually usually not sent, it's actually usually not short to ground itself, but rather to ground through the GPU, in which case the, the GPU has been fed 12 volts and may, may be dead. But I don't think this is the case in, for this particular card. Anyways, let's check, I should note that I've never worked on an RX 6000 series card or even RX 5000 series card. So when I go around the ver various voltage rails on the card and give my opinion on what their resistances are supposed to be, I'm gonna base it off the RX 580s I've worked on. So. Starting with um, this inductor, whatever this is, we have. This one's kind of hard to read. It just keeps cycling. It's My multimeter is probably going to take some time to get a proper reading off this. So, anyways, I can tell it's 10 kilo ohms and rising, so we're just going to ignore, ignore it for now. It's obviously not short. Now, let's check this one. I'm not too sure what this is either. So, you can see we're pushing uh, 8.2 kilo ohms. That's perfectly fine for whatever rail it, it may be. I'm guessing at least. Now let's check our five volts. This is def this is probably five volts given it's a linear dropout regulator and this and I'm guessing this is the output tab. So 1.4 kilo ohms, 1.3, that's perfectly fine for five volts. Now let's check um let's check I'm guessing uh 1.8 volts. If it is 1.8 volts, this is perfectly normal resistance on an RX 580. For 1.8 volts, you expect to see about two kilo ohms. And this, if it is 1.8 volts and it is similar to an RX 580, that's perfectly normal. Now let's check um, this here. I'm Normally that whatever voltage rail is in this location, at least on an RX 580, is usually the display rail. And display rail normally on an RX 580 has a very low resistance. I'm talking like, you know, 15 ohms, and this would be perfectly normal if it was display rail on an RX 580. So I'm not gonna think twice about the 22, 23 ohms. I'm gonna say it's good. Now let's check the memory. So for an RTX 20 series card, you expect to see about 20 ohms for Samsung GDDR. 6, and in this case we have 
26 ohms, so I'm gonna say it's good. Now let's check the memory controller, or sometimes called VDDCI. For an RX 580, again, I expect to see about 20 ohms, and we have 22, so that's probably perfectly good. Now the next thing I wanna check is actually the SOC, so I'm not too sure what, I've, I'm not sure um, what the resistance is supposed to be on the SOC, so I'm gonna measure it across um, this inductor here, and in particular, I'm gonna first measure the probes. I wanna see the resistance of my probes, so we have 0 0.8, 0 0.9 ohms. Okay, so we'll subtract that from our final resistance measurements. So checking the actual SOC, it's the SOC rail itself, we have 0 0.2, which suggests, and given that the, our probes have about 0 0.8 um, ohms resistance, this would put the SOC at about one and a half ohms. So finally, if you don't know, the GPU VRM is basically always zero ohms, but let's just check it anyways. Again, yeah, like I see, like you can see, 0 0.9 ohms, and that's basically the resistance of our probes. So everything looks good. The GPU is probably still alive, and that's a good sign. So generally speaking, diagnosing a short and finding and fixing a short on 12 volts is usually trivial, if I'm gonna be honest. If you have a power supply and a multimeter, there are only a few basic checks, and then you can pretty much determine what kind of component you're looking for. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hook up my power supply to the card and try to make a determination what path current takes from our short 12 volt rail to ground. Now, I, I just wanna note that if you watch, if you know, if, especially this is my, the first video you've ever seen of mine, you know, if you ever watch like these laptop repair videos or some, you know, for other electronics, you may notice that that a lot of people who work on, let's say, laptops, what they like to do is they like to find, if they have like a, if they have a short on the high voltage, high amperage rail, which on a laptop is 19 volts, what they like to do is they like to feed 19 volts on the 19 volt rail and just see what gets hot. In my opinion, on a graphics card, this is generally poor form. And the reason why, as I probably alluded to earlier, is that you don't know um, what path current takes on its way from the short 12 volt rail to ground. You know, it could go, for example, from 12 volts directly to ground, in which case we should be good to just feed 12 volts. I say should be, because you don't, you, you can never be too sure. The other possibility is that let's, that whatever current we feed to our short 12 volt rail will pass through, say, a power stage, go to the GPU, and then to ground. In which case, if we fed 12 volts to the actual, you know, um, short 12 volt rail, we'd also be feeding 12 volts to the GPU, and this is not a good idea, obviously. So what I'm gonna do as I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but I'm gonna hook up my power supply and in particular, I'm gonna hook, set it to 0 0.6 volts. So, you know, like I said earlier, I'm not interested in seeing what gets hot. This is, like I said, I think poor form on a graphics card. I, I just wanna trace the path, if I can, the path that sh current takes on its way to ground. And in particular, I wanna see if it passes through the GPU. If it passes through the GPU, I know I can't use any more than let's say, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 volts, depending on what the lowest voltage rail is. But if it doesn't, then I should be able to be safe. I should be safe to just feed 12 volts to the card and see what gets hot. Anyways, so I have my uh, live probe, and if we just hook it up to the short 12 volt rail, I can see that the card is now taking 0 0.6 volts and 0. Point, 1.7 amps. So, like I said earlier, we're looking. We're trying to trace what path um, current takes on it takes its way to ground, and in particular, we, we want to see if it passes through the GPU. So I have my multimeter in voltage mode. We're just gonna check all the voltage rails that are connected directly to GPU to see if it appears on any of them. So starting with the memory, so actually, maybe not, we may not have to check the memory. On um, NVIDIA cards, you do have to check the memory because the memory phase also powers the memory controller, I think, at least on some NVIDIA cards. But in this case, I think it's separate. Anyways, let's check the uh, memory controller. Zero still, checking the SOC. Zero, but checking the v GPU V core, we have 480 millivolts. But checking the voltage of the source, we have 488, 489. So we have a nine millivolt. Millivolt. So at the moment, at 1.76 amps, you know we have a nine millivolt drop from our short 12 volt inductor to the GPU V core. So if you don't know these power stages and/or MOSFETs, depending on what card you have, they bridge the these 12 volt inputs to the GPU V core output. They're not designed to take whatever voltage they have at the 12 volt rail and just pass it to the GPU. Like I said in one of my earlier videos, you can just use a, use a wire for that. They're supposed to step it down to a safe voltage for the GPU V core so that the V core doesn't fry itself and continues functioning in it and having you know a long happy, well maybe not so happy, maybe not so much happy, but you know a long semi-productive life.
But anyways, as you can see, we have um, voltage on the GPU vCore, which suggests to us that one of our GPU power stages are is faulty and by extension passing, you know, whatever voltage we feed on the short 12 volt rails to the GPU itself. Anyways, so there are a couple methods that we can use to determine um, what's, which uh, MOSFET is bad. This is a particularly, I wouldn't say difficult card, but it's a, definitely one of the harder ones to do because it has 14, it's a 14 phase GPU VRM, I think, and none of, nothing actually looks bad. But anyways, before we discuss how we can determine which MOSFET is bad, I need to look up what the what model these MOSFETs are and look at their pinout, and I also need to grab a coffee. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so one of the things that you want to do, especially on these uh, high-powered cards, is with you know lots of uh, GPU VRM phases, is you want to eliminate as many phases as possible as a possible suspect for having a bad power stage. So. The thing about these cards, you know, especially with a lot of, um, especially with these very strong GPU VRMs, is that these uh, power stages they don't all receive 12 volts from the same connector. You know, some of these power stages will, will, for example, receive 12 volts from, let's say, this connector. Some will receive from it from this connector, and others will receive it from, say, this connector or maybe the PCI Express slot. So, because they're all wired to a different um, 12 volt input, you can actually just use, let's say, you know, beep mode to eliminate. Some, at least some of your power stages. You can't do this on every card, but for especially for high-end cards like this, you can definitely do it. So I have my multimeter in a beep mode. When I probe ground, it beeps. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check these, there are capacitors next to these power stages. Um, actually, you know what, let me zoom in, just so you can better see what I'm talking about. So these power stages, they often have a capacitor, input capacitor for input filtering, I should say. So you, what you can do is you can just check whether any of these reads is short. So let's just say on this one, we have on top it's ground, but on the bottom, nothing. So we know that this uh, this phase is, well, it, at least it's not short. It might it may not be good, but it's definitely not short. So at least we don't think it's short, you know, we could be wrong. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check all the uh, GPU phases and I'm, we're gonna see which ones have short capacitor, well, which capacitors read as short, so we can see, we can try to eliminate as many phases as possible as suspects. So, starting with the bottom capacitor here, so the top seems to be ground, so the bottom is not, sh so that's, this one's good. Going to the next phase, good, good. Okay, so these top three are all, um, this is memory controller and memories, but we'll, we'll just check them anyways. Yep, that's fine. Remember the memory controller was very low, so that's why it takes a long time. Memory is fine, of course. We already know this. Now let's go to the other side of the board and check these power phases. So, sorry, um, VRM phases, I should say. So let's start with uh, the top one here, which is, again, the GPU VRM. So, okay, so that side's short, and this side is short. Checking this one. Okay, so right off the bat, we can tell that everything on this side of the board, all the uh, power stages on this side of the board are good. They're not connected to our short 12 volt rail, which means that we can eliminate them as suspects. So naturally, our suspects are all these rails here, right? But you remember that when we fed um, 0.6 volts on the short 12 volt input, we did not have voltage appear on the inductor on our SOC rail. So we also so we can also eliminate these bottom two, and that leaves just uh, five five phases as suspect. So we've gone from having possibly 14, having to you know consider 14 different GPU phases to just considering these five. So the next thing we want to do is check the gates on the actual MOSFETs themselves. Okay, I actually just want to add something um, before we go on to check the gates. So the thing about these uh, power stages and MOSFETs is that when they die, they often go out in a blaze of glory. So they usually, you know, like sometimes they burn a hole in the board and they, you know, crack their own, you know, power stage or MOSFET housing or whatever. Anyways, so what we're gonna do before we check the gates, actually, we're gonna look at the actual power stages themselves. So what we're looking for is either, you know, deformed packaging, like sometimes you see, see like a bubble on top of the, you know, um, 
power stage or MOSFET or whatever. You also want to look for, let's say, burn marks. So sometimes, you, you know, these MOSFET, these um, power stages and MOSFETs, they get so hot that they actually rip the, they actually burn off the uh, solar mask for the PCB. So what you see is that sometimes you see like exposed copper on the edges or whatever, or near a pin. And then finally, we also want to look for solder balls. These are, you know, some, like I said, you know, when these power stages and MOSFETs, they go out, they often go out in a blaze of glory. And like, like, and you know, they get so warm that they actually melt the solder under them and the solder then leaks out in, in the form of a solder ball at the edge of the, you know, MOSFET or power stage housing. But anyways, so just, this is our, what, what, this is one of our suspects for uh, our bad, uh, power stage so at the moment this one looks perfectly good going down i'm going to say that uh none of these look bad unfortunately so it doesn't seem like we're going to get away with um you know being able to just visually inspect them but if you have let's say you know a short 12 volt rail and you know it's like a mosfet or power stage you will want to look at them under a micro a microscope or in my case a magnifying glass to see if anything you know looks off or different Anyways, since this is not going to tell us anything, we're going to go ahead and put the card back on our bench and t check the um, gate pins and the resistances across them to see if any of them uh, look bad. Okay, so I've checked the model of the power stage, and it is a TDA21472. There's no um, detailed, publicly available detailed data sheet for this. I believe you can get away with using the pinout for a TDA21490. Unfortunately, there's no... Um, as far as I can tell, at least, just by briefly looking at it, there's no pin to check the gate for the high side MOSFET. So usually when these MOSFETs fail, it's the high side MOSFET that fails. And you can check the gate for the low side MOSFET, and they all look good on these five power stages. They read as, I think, um, five and a half kilo ohms, roughly speaking. But like I said, they look good. So there's no, I have no good or at least reliable way of determining which power stage is bad. So we have to do this the old-fashioned and inefficient way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off each one of these inductors one by one, and we're going to see whether we have a direct connection from 12 volts to any of these inductor pads. Okay, so I haven't taken off all the inductors, and I, but I have partially disconnected too. So you'll notice that I've... What I've done is I've... Uh, ew. Anyways, so what I've... That's, sorry, I have flux on my finger now. That's kind of disgusting. But what I've done is I've disconnected the uh, inductor on this side so that it no longer has, it no longer allows the inductor pads to have a direct connection for these two MOSFETs. Actually, maybe not, not MOSFETs, power stages, but maybe not this one. But any, anyways, in either case, when we hook up our multimeter and check for short on 12 volts, nothing. As you, as you can see, it doesn't beep, but when we probe ground, it beeps. So we can tell that our previously short A pin is no longer short. That tells us that it has to be one of these two power stages. Now, because we have the inductor partially lifted, we can actually determine exactly which. So if you if you watch my um, EVGA SC1080 Ti repair number two, the, the one where the computer won't power on, then you remember that I used, I um, hooked up one probe to I'll briefly show a 12 volt rail, and I went over all the inductor pads. I'm going to do this for the uh, s this inductor here. You won't be able to see, but you can. But it'll be the exact same idea as you see in that other video. So if I put if I put my ground probe on the uh, inductor pad, we have a connection. But on this one, nothing. On these, nothing, nothing, nothing. But back to our the one where we think we have a bad MOSFET. I mean power stage. Okay, so we know that this power stage is bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and I'm gonna reattach the inductors. Okay, so I've taken off the, uh, as you can see, I've taken off our fending MOSFETs and I've also reattached the inductor on top. I've still left this unattached because I have to um, put on a MOSFET, not a MOSFET, sorry, power stage later on. Um, I've already ordered the power stage. I actually ordered it before I got the card. I just assumed it'd be a power stage and it's nice to be, it's nice to be right. Anyways, so, Again, you know, when we check for a short on our previously short 12 volt pin, 8 pin, you know, it's um, not short anymore. But of course, the ground still beeps. So yes, it was actually this power stage. I actually am curious about something. So on an RX 580, if an, on an XFX RX 580 GTS, if you remove a power stage and you boot the card, the card still boots. You can't reliably, well, you can't really expect to getting like you know gaming performance out of it but at the very least you can get into windows i'm actually kind of curious if you can do this on this card so i'm actually going to replace this uh 
induct it with a fuse, a 5 amp fuse, just for testing purposes. And we're gonna try to boot the car to see if the um, if we at least get to the bio splash screen. Okay, so as you can see, I've um, changed the inductor for this very, very ugly fuse and solar braid combination. The reason why I've done this is because my the fuses I have are not actually long enough to connect both inductor pads together. You know, it, there's always a gap which prevents the card from getting 12 volts. So I've had to improvise and use a copper braid and solder to one end of the fuse to the other inductor pad just so that there's an actual connection. Electrically speaking, this is just equivalent to having a fuse. It's very ugly as you can see, but this is a just for testing purposes so you know the card doesn't catch fire should there be some greater underlying problem with the card. Anyways, so let's go ahead and turn the power supply on and let's boot the card. So the card's booted, you can see the LEDs on the left, and let's see, do you have, oh, actually no, we don't need to check. We have a bio splash screen, so if you're wondering, like, hold on, let me turn the card off, so if you're wondering why it's, why the bio splash screen is corrupted, it's because my motherboard that I'm using currently, it's very, 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 very old, it is, um, it's a, it has a non-UFE BIOS, which gives it compatibility issues with any semi-modern AMD card. So, but anyways, in either case, that's a very good sign. It suggests to us we have a, li a uh, working GPU, which is of course what you always want to see on a card that's short to 12 volts. You know, while I have the card in this configuration, let's go ahead and measure all the voltages. I'm just curious, you know, what the voltages are across the in each rail. So anyways, let's go ahead and boot the card again and quickly measure it. We know what, what the resistances are, we just want to see what their um, voltages are. Okay, so we have 5 volts, 5 volts, 5 volts, 750, 818, 877, 1.35, and finally, 1.8, okay? I'm not sure if those are correct voltages, you know, this card has been through quite a lot given it's been uh, benched on liquid nitrogen, but I'm gonna go ahead and say those are, I mean, at least they're high enough for the card to be in a bootable state, so it's probably okay. In either case, we have a bootable card. Like I said earlier, I've already ordered the um, replacement driver. Well, when I get the MOSFETs, I'll put them back on and we'll, of course, stress test the card. Okay, so as you can see, I've reinstalled a replacement power stage. And as you can also see, I've kind of browned the inductor. I uh, This was obviously not my intention. You know, this is what you see here is very far from my best work. So when you see it on YouTube, please know that this is not how it usually goes. But let me tell you that of all the cards I have ever worked on, when it comes to replacing a power stage, this car is by far the hardest I've ever... It, it is by far the hardest. So not only are there all, like, a lot of little tiny components next to the power stage, which you run the risk of blowing off the board if you screw up, but there's also the fact that this particular power stage has a really, really small pin pitch, and of course all these inductors right here redirect airflow to the left side, making it hard to heat the board, and then there's the fact that this board itself is very, very thick and has a very loud surface area, and so it kind of acts like a heat sink. Put a, if you put all this together, you get kind of a... Well, a board that's basically a nightmare to change a power stage on. But as you will be able to see, at the very least, it was all worth it. So when we replace a MOSFET or power stage, you want to confirm that the power stage actually powers on and it actually functions. So the proper way to do this is with an oscilloscope, of course, but I don't own one. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the multimeter here to measure the switching frequency of the power stage. So if it, the power stage works, we should see for this particular card a switching frequency of about 500 kilohertz. So let's boot the card and let's measure the sw switching frequency. Ch measuring, the sw measuring the switching frequency on this side of the inductor, we have 499.2 kilohertz. So yes. 500 kilohertz. The card works, you heard that beep, so the computer did successfully post, and so all we have left to do is, of course, to put the cooler back on and stress test it, and of course, change this back to an inductor. See the uh, card's hooked up at the moment? It's actually hooked up to the monitor, but unfortunately, as you can see, it's also not good news. You can see the artifacting on the screen. So the thing about artifacting is that, generally speaking, artifacting suggests either a problem with the uh, G GPU core or the memory. But in this case, due to, due to the manner in which it artifacts, I'm going to have to say, and also the fact that the core was exposed to 12 volts, I'm going to say that we actually have a problem with the GPU core. And the other giveaway in this case is also the, it's also the fact that it's, um, you'll notice that it's not, you know, it's turning off and on every couple seconds. That's because the, that's because the card itself is actually taking about four seconds to load, to render a single frame at idle. So, you know, very likely we have, oh, there we go, video TDR failure. This is classic uh, GPU failure, if I'm honest. So like I said, you know, we have a problem with the GPU core. Unfortunately, as you can kind of see, 
you know, you don't always get a happy ending when you fix graphics cards. In fact, a lot of times recently, especially recently, I've been getting a lot of uh, graphics cards that are not fixable because they have dead GPUs. This weekend in particular, I've had, I've looked at two 3090s and the 6900 XT, all of them have dead GPUs, which is, all of them are also liquid nitrogen cards, but you know, dead GPUs nonetheless, you know, it's, uh, well, things are not always nice. But anyways, I hope you learned something watching this video. I uh, definitely don't feel too good about having to tell the owner that their card is dead. Otherwise, hopefully, I guess I'll see you in the next one where hopefully we'll have a happy ending.